What's going on everyone? So the Lakers are looking for a trade to upgrade their roster. And after last night's performance, I really think they need to, right? I mean, the Lakers look like a team that can potentially contend and beat anybody. If the Lakers that we saw last night are the team going forward, or at least the team that we see in the playoffs, good luck trying to beat that team. That team was so good. LeBron, AD, Westbrook uh, were fantastic, but I still think they need another piece. I think they need another consistent player or two. And it makes a lot of sense to take Patrick Beverly and Kendrick Nunn and try to flip them into an asset or two that can come in and really contribute and then kind of evaluate and see where you're at as a team from there. But when it comes to these two and maybe say a Damian Jones or something like that, just to match salaries, whatever you need to do, what would be the best package uh, that they could get uh, a player, maybe two. Ideally, you'd like to get two, you know, swap these two guys for two other productive guys, either that or get like one like really productive mid tier guy, you know, something like Boyan Bogdanovich, I think would fit perfectly. He's a guy that, you know, he can play on or off the ball. He doesn't really need the ball. He can, you know, catch and shoot. Um, I was even looking into his catch and shooting stats uh, not too long ago. And he has about 60% of his shots are within 10 feet or are within, you know, basic catch and shoot range. Uh, 27% is from catch and shoot. Another 31% is uh, at within 10 feet. So usually assisted uh, points. And then he has 40% that are from pull-ups, but not every one of those pull-ups are necessarily him, you know, dribbling a bunch and then coming in. And a lot of it is just him getting a shot or him getting the ball, pump fake, take a step in or whatever, boom, pull up, something along those lines, right? So he's a guy that doesn't really need the ball too heavily, but can give you 20 points a game. If you can take two unproductive guys and turn them into a productive guy, that is beautiful. If you get like a Sadiq Bay, that's even better. That might be the best deal in my opinion. Um, but another real viable option and one that I want to talk about and explore. And I kind of want to dive into several options uh, as we get uh, and approach December 15th. Um, but sticking with the option that I want to talk about today, and of course, here are thoughts and opinions as always, is a Josh Richardson, Yaka Perto package, right? So um, mathematically speaking, these two could work. You could go get these two for our two players, Patrick Beverly, Kendrick Nunn, do a nice little swap. Uh, you probably have to give up a first, maybe a second, something along those lines, some incentive to entice the San Antonio Spurs. But with this package, you're getting a guy in Yaka Pertl who can be a defensive center, a low post threat. Shooting-wise, not very great, but if Anthony Davis can start knocking down shots, that could be hugely beneficial, right? We saw Anthony Davis go two or three from three. He looked like his shot was a lot more fluid last night. Was that kind of an anomaly, or is that something that we can expect going forward? Uh, that's a big thing because up until last night, his shot has just not really been falling. That's kind of a concern that I have with centers. Uh, also, when it comes to the center position, uh, Russell Westbrook has been just absolutely monstrous playing alongside our centers, right? I mean, winning Gabriel, Thomas Bryant, Anthony Davis are just feasting with Russell Westbrook, right? Because Russell Westbrook is just running that pick and roll, penetrating, and just creating easy buckets for our big. And a guy like Yaka Pertl, who is so good around the basket, a guy that, you know, can basically has all the intangibles to put the ball in the hoop down low, I think could be beneficial. Um, also, he's a guy low post threat that you could just dump the ball down to kind of let him go to work, go get an easy bucket, especially in those times, you know, where the Lakers will get like stagnant in offense or, you know, like they're just not hitting shots or something like that. It would be nice to kind of have a guy like Yaka Pertl that you could dump the ball down to and kind of let things settle, go get an easy bucket, go get an easy two. kind of, you know, just, just put yourself in a position to, to let your offense settle a little bit. Uh, he's also a great passer, played in the Spurs system. So he's a guy that is willing to share the ball, willing to play whatever role he wants to do. Uh, he's not going to be as expensive as, say, like a Miles Turner or something like that. It's not going to cost a lot. Uh, even if you want to re-sign him, he's not going to cost as much as, say, a Miles Turner or something like that. He's a guy that can give you, you know, 15 points a night or however many points you want, depending on how many touches you want to give him. Uh, he's a guy that night in and night out can consistently give you assists, give you rebounds, give you points. And he's productive, right? Look, at the end of the day, anybody is more productive than especially Patrick Beverly on the offensive end. Patrick Beverly is the worst offensive player in the league currently. Uh, so 
any offensive production is something better than that. Kendrick Nunn just hasn't really been great. He's kind of fallen flat. At least with Josh Richardson, uh, he's kind of like, you know, what KCP was. He would be like our new KCP uh, with this team. You know, a guy that could play, it'd be a 3 and D guy. He's still young enough. Uh, he's got some good length. Uh, he's not the tallest, but he's got some good length. You know, he, he's a guy that can play defense. He can guard multiple positions. He can play multiple positions. He can shoot the ball. He can create his own shot. He could kind of come in. He could, I wouldn't be shocked if he kind of reinvents himself. You know, like I've seen a lot of people mention uh, Josh Richardson and are like, yeah, he's not the player he once was, but he's also not in the position he once was, right? And especially with the Spurs, the Spurs are, are going younger, they're rebuilding, they're not trying to have Josh Richardson, a, a veteran, come in and give him 30 a game, right? That's not what they want. I mean, he's had games this season where he's came off the bench and gave 30, you know, so they, they're kind of at times seem like they're limiting his minutes. Like you'll see games with the Spurs and he'll start getting hot and they'll just take him out of the game, right? Like, and you're just like, what? Like that dude just made three straight baskets. Why? Like, why did you just take him out of the game? And it's because the Spurs are a tanking team. The Spurs and the Lakers are in a very different position. Not just that, but Josh Richardson's role with the Lakers would be a lot different than what it would be with uh, with the San Antonio Spurs, right? So that could be hugely beneficial for him as well. You get two guys, again, that are, they can't be any worse than Patrick Beverly and Kendrick Dunn, right? At the end of the day, that's what this is. And it just gives you two more bodies to fit into the rotation. Also, imagine, you know, you have, you could have a starting lineup of like Richardson, uh, Walker, LeBron, uh, Yaka Pertl, and Anthony Davis. That, that's not a bad starting five. You got defense, you got shooting, you got, you know, some some decent size, you got some uh, defense, uh, low post defense, you got switchability, you got a little bit of everything with that starting five. I think that that could actually be a, a legit starting five that can compete with many, um, or you can do different lineup changes, right? Uh, you could, you know, maybe keep AD at the five, bring Jakob off the bench, uh, you know, have him kind of be the backup center for Anthony Davis, uh, and then go, you know, LeBron at the four. Maybe you have Walker, Richardson, and Reeves, or or Schroeder, something like that. That's an option that you could do as well. I just think it gives the Lakers the flexibility and the versatility uh, that could be very solid. Uh, now, obviously, the Spurs are a team that's been linked to the Lakers for some time. They might be more incentivized to take a you know Kendrick Nunn and Patrick Beverly over uh, a Russell Westbrook for a multitude of reasons, right? And this is something else that I want to keep hitting on as we move forward and we touch on other trades because I think this is really important. Uh, teams may be more inclined to take Beverly and Nunn because they may be easily tradable as opposed to Russell Westbrook, right? So for example, like Russell Westbrook is hard to trade. If you're the Spurs, you're probably not trading Russell Westbrook, right? He's a $47 million contract. You're a tanking team. You're not trying to take on, you know, all these various salaries and players that can try to help. You're not in, the, in a position like the Lakers, right? So you're you're just taking on Russell Westbrook just to buy him out. That's it. You have, like That's the only reason you would take on Russell Westbrook. And, 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 of course, to get the assets. But Patrick Beverly and Kendrick Nunn, there might be a team that goes, hey, we'll take a chance on Kendrick Nunn. He's making $6 million a year. Why not? You know, and maybe you could go get a young guy. You know, may, maybe the maybe the the Pistons would swap Kendrick Nunn for Sadiq Bey. You know, just to kind of get a change of scenery, get, you know, you get a, a guy in Kendrick Nunn that maybe come in, especially why Cade, Cade's out. Maybe, maybe do something like that. They might not want to do that for the Lakers, but maybe they'll do it for another team. You know, Lakers tax is a real thing. The, the point is, is that it's easier to find options for a $6 million and $13 million player than it is for a $47 million player. So you could move Bev and Nunn in individual trades or you know, one trade or whatever, or, you know, just, just buy them out. You know, it's also cheaper to buy out $18 million dollars 19 million dollars than it is to to buy out 47 million dollars right so that's another thing too so it might also make the lakers getting these two guys that much cheaper 
And I think that that is something that that needs that is important to to at least note uh, for this this potential trade going forward. And look again, I I still think I w- if it was down to the Spurs and the Pistons, um, I would personally probably do the Pistons trade, but I don't think this is a terrible second option. I really think Josh Richardson can come in, kind of be our KCP level player, which we could really use, right? And I mean KCP, it's not like KCP was six eight. You know, like, you know, so it, it's one of those things. Like, I, I really think that Josh Richardson can come and be that guy, have him and Walker kind of running the defense, protecting the perimeter, protecting the wing. Uh, you know, I would, would I like more size on the perimeter? Absolutely. But who who's out there right now, really? You know, Boyan Bogdanovich, yes, he's got size, but the problem is he's not like, he's not a defender. He's, a, I mean, he tries, he's serviceable, but he's not really a defender. Uh, you know, Sadiq Bey isn't really a defender. He has potential. He's young. He's got the size. He's got all the intangibles to potentially be a defender. And maybe Darvin Ham could get him to be a defender, but he's not really a defender. You know what I mean? Like the, I mean the the Hornets deal maybe, but you got to probably trade Russ to, to get any of those pieces. Uh, maybe you could get some other, you know, like a PJ Washington and Kelly Oubre, who I want to talk about. That might might be the next video that I do in this little segment. Um, but you know, outside of that, I, I think you, you get a, a, a solid defensive scoring low post center, get a three and D style, uh, you know, shooting guard, small forward. Um, is he a little undersized? Sure. But he's got a good long wingspan, uh, which is good. Uh, so at least you got some length there uh, to, to just make things difficult. And it's just another body. You get two more guys into your rotation, which right now the Lakers have several, right? Got the big three. You got Reeves. You got Walker. You got Troy Brown. You got Wayne and Gabriel. You got Thomas Bryant, uh, Dennis Schroeder. So there's nine guys right there. You know, on top of like, you know, these two guys. Now you're a legit eight to ten players deep. You know, you got great rotation. You got you got all. Uh, you got several guys that can give you at least eight plus a game. Like Yaka Pertle can give you easily ten to fifteen a game at least like that a bad game he probably gives you 10 so there you go so you got at least you know a 15 point a game guy there josh richardson can give you anywhere from 10 to 15 a night so there's that again another bad game from him maybe he gives you eight you know like that's better than patrick beverly patrick beverly a good night is like seven points <laughs> you know so it's like you're, you're getting that production same thing with kendrick nunn a good night is like seven points maybe 10 points you know um so to, to go get two guys that can provide that uh and in place of two guys that aren't pro- providing that production i just don't see how you could lose and and then you can kind of reevaluate and see okay how do we look now how does this team perform now is this team you know there are we good or do we need to do another deal and then maybe you go and maybe you do the rust deal if you need to um but Anyway, as always, this is a discussion, so I want to hear from you. Let me know your thoughts and opinions down in the comment section below. What do you think of this deal? Should you, Would the Lakers do it? Would you do it? How do you feel? Good, bad, ugly, somewhere in between. However you feel, I'd love to hear your thoughts and opinions. So let me know down in the comment section below.